the Batman came out on Crave. So I started watching that. It's a three hour movie. Chalk it up into pieces. And watch it a section at a time. This is another solo episode on the Mr. Mike Podcast, Wrong Answers Only. And I thought we'd talk about some things that I find are important to myself that maybe will help you or be important to you as well. Uh, routines. Routines. How do you make routines? What are routines? Habits. Are habits the same as routines? Are habits good? Are habits bad? Routines are kind of like a deliberate thing you do every day repetitively you know making your bed in the morning going for a walk things like that maybe you have a certain time you read at every day each time or um, kind of like practicing you know for all those rat gym goers you know you go to the gym three times a week religiously at the same time that's kind of like a routine and it's not really It's not really the same as a habit, even though both are kind of repeated, you know, purposely or not on purposely, consciously or subconsciously, you know, habits are kind of, I would say habits sometimes are thought of as negatively, something negative. And then how you get into those routines or habits, it's another story. Like, is there something that gets you going? Um, You see something and then your routine triggers, your alarm clock goes off and initiates stuff. A uh, certain time, like a like a almost like a cue of some sort, like it triggers you, tells you, okay, I want to start this habit or I want to start this routine. Comparison to a negative something or a negative habit, it would be like smoking a cigarette. Maybe there's something that triggers your need for you know to pick up a cigarette or do something like that. So, and I find um, routines are, you know, to to change routines or add routines, you have to do small changes to like work them in you can't just say all of a sudden i'm going to do eight o'clock in the morning i'm going to do this and nine o'clock in the morning i'm going to do this and 10 11 12 i'm going to eat lunch at a certain time and drive here and exercise here like it doesn't work like that okay we kind of get overloaded so you need to change things slowly or add pieces to your routine one step at a time until they become kind of natural without you even thinking about it they just get worked into your, your, your lifestyle and stuff, you know, it's kind of like a loop and then your brain enjoys the loop after, and then it, it looks forward to doing it. Right. You know, and then routines are, are kind of like things that you do and then they, you do them just to do them at some point. So like, again, I mentioned ma- making your bed. The other thing could be brushing your teeth, taking a shower, stuff like that. And if you're, <laughs> if you're in Canada, shoveling the snow every time you get home, those are those are just kind of like functions of our life, and it is kind of hard to add new routines to our day and stuff. That are, and they don't necessarily need to be meaningful, but there's other stuff called like uh, I mean, they're still part of your routine. So like more like rituals, like where you you do something meaningful, and there's like there's power behind it. Like you you need to do it for a purpose. You it's it's got value. It's not necessarily anything to do with like you know a religious aspect or anything like that. But it's kind of like a, an engaging experience rather than uh, something you're doing just to do, like a, a task. Brushing your teeth is a task. You do it because you have to do it, and you do it to complete it, and then your routine goes forward. At a more advanced routine, like a ritual, it's not like that. It's it's more like something something mindful, right? Mindfulness is something else that, we don't really keep in mind, ironically, mindfulness and keeping in mind. Mindfulness is not something people really pay attention to or pay attention to themselves during the day. You know, when you go in the shower, it's a routine, but you don't really pay attention to the routine or the mundane repetition of showering every day at the same time. But if you really, like, live in the moment, you could almost feel the water. 
lose yourself in the moment type of stuff, you know? Same thing with eating food. Same thing with some people enjoy uh, cleaning their house. Maybe you lose yourself in cleaning the house. Uh, maybe you put some music on. It gets you moving in a certain way. So it's kind of therapeutic for some people. Not exercise, but movement, right? And, you know, other other points of mindfulness, really, is, is you know, getting out of the house, like breathing the air, or taking a second to look up, look at the sun, look at the sky, smell the trees, you know, be in the moment. Other things people do is writing, reflecting about themselves, their day, you know, kind of like mental exercises. You kind of need those mental exercises to make yourself feel better, mind, body, and soul. It's kind of like what I did with my poetry. You did, I did it for years repetitively. Not repetitively, but regularly. And it was, it was an exercise for my brain or my soul or both. You know, <laughs> I think you do the same thing. You could set up routines and rituals for your writing, for your poetry, for your practicing music, writing music too. You know, one thing, one thing I do do often and I remind myself, especially when you're stressed, is take a deep breath, like, like a deep breath and exhale but hold it when you take that deep breath and you, you hold it and then you let it go and it, it actually helps with anxiety and tension you know some people will listen to meditation type apps and podcasts and things for me uh, the sound of rain or thunderstorms really helps so i put that on in the google at night to go to sleep or uh, the sound of the fan circulating fresh cool air I used to sleep with the fan on in the winter a lot. So that was part of my routine and my habit. And I made it part of the process. I made it part of my being mindful of the air and the space where I was sleeping. And things like that, uh, being mindful really, really helps really helps you remember things, right? Especially practicing to remember things. It's a skill in itself. What else, what else can you do to be mindful or add to your routines, your habits? Well, you can listen to the Mr. Mike podcast. But wrong answers only. And that's actually some people I was talking to earlier asked me, when do I listen to podcasts? There's other people I listen to that on Twitter that have podcasts. And I tend to do that when I'm in a bathroom or in a shower because really it's my only time to to listen to something outside of my my routines and my habits and my day-to-day. And it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to go shave. I'm going to go shower. I'm going to go clean up in there. It's going to take me, you know, a little bit. I can listen to one, two, three episodes, no problem. So that's where I listen to podcasts. It used to be, that's where I used to read some books, but now podcast listening for me is in there. Sometimes in the car. I know I know some people listen to podcasts in the morning on the car or drive home. So that's that's their thing and that's their routines and that's fine. It's like whatever works for you. Adding new skills. It's being mindful of yourself. Adding to your routines learning new material and all this stuff like it goes into like there's therapeutic benefits to it you're working on yourself you make yourself feel better you know learning new skill too it helps you to be creative and you didn't you don't really know unless you you do it regularly but you need to you need to have some kind of outlet to be creative and i'm not saying everybody needs to draw a picasso or paint a picasso but maybe build something maybe um Again, write write poetry, draw a picture, make a PowerPoint presentation for something for a class. That's kind of creativity too. There's there's all kinds of things really, and I and I kind of have a bunch of different projects that I work on, and and there's you know there's all kinds of things you can learn and improve upon. You wish we had more time in a day. Actually, fun fact: I learned that our our planet's rotation slowing down slightly. So uh, somewhere in the future, we may not be alive, but there will be like 25-hour days and not 24-hour days. Eventually, we'll have more time on the planet, right, during a day. Uh, Other things, uh, getting rest. Sleep is paramount. Also, naps are important. You may not think so, but naps and naps are very important, even if they're 20 minutes. It helps your body uh, re-energize, feel better, you know, get rid of toxins. Going to sleep, like I like to drink a glass of water before bed and a glass of water when I get up. And I I find that helps. It flushes your system out. But make sure you try to get sleep all the time at the same time and the same amount of hours. Sleeping too much, not good. If you're an adult, 
Well, sometimes I'm getting, you know, with a baby, it's a different story. You don't get a lot, but sometimes I get six hours. For me, optimally, I think I want to say, I don't know, seven or eight hours is probably best for me. Other people, it's uh, probably a little bit more. Teener, teenagers generally sleep a boatload of hours. I remember sleeping all kinds of hours when I was younger. I could sleep anywhere. That was amazing. Now I get up early for no reason. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah. So, you know, all this to say that when you're trying to be mindful of your day, yourself, your activities, your routines, your habits, you, you, you implement routines and, and good habits to help you free up time and energy for yourself so you feel better and have more time to do other things. Because if it's not natural or if it's not subconscious, the things you do, are, like you just don't do it intrinsically. You have to think about what you're doing. And if you're thinking about what you're doing, you're slower. So over time, if you like, okay, I do this, I do this, I do this, you don't even have to do it anymore. It's like motor memory. It's like muscle memory. You just kind of do it. And it helps you save time going forward. Maybe you're faster in the morning. Maybe you're faster at the end of the day. Maybe, okay, you can get the cooking done that faster. You can clean up faster. You could do this. Like if you moved out on your own and you never cooked before, it's going to take you some time to figure out how to make meals, plan, buy stuff. But once you get good at it, you'll learn how to buy groceries, prep meals. And they clean up faster, and especially if you don't like cleaning up, like washing the dishes and cleaning up the kitchen is the worst. But over time, practice, good practice too. There's also bad practice. You can do bad practice in something that makes your habits worse. Good practice, regular practice, and it helps you improve little things. We don't even think about it, like the day to day stuff, but even washing the dishes, it, it, it makes a big deal, you know? And all that stuff, if you, if you iron it out, eventually over time, it'll save you. Or give you more time in other areas. I was actually having a discussion on Twitter recently with someone about what how I kind of plan out my day. Well, some days I get up at five thirty, other days I get at six, assuming I slept through the night. You go to work, you get home. Sometimes it's you know four o'clock in the afternoon. Then what do you do? Well, I don't feel well because I got my health issues, so I might need a twenty minute power nap or something, and then. Talk about the day, what's going on, what's for dinner, what's to do this, prep. Am I showering now? Am I showering later? And what am I doing? What am I doing for the podcast? Am I, there's other things like exercise that I got to work back into my routine. So that's my my struggle right now. And, uh, you know, during the weekends too, my time's filled up. I get up early. I catch up on stuff. I do my work, uh, you know, do renovations or demolition or stuff like that or manage the garbage outside and all, all kinds of stuff. So like my day's full. Plus you, you got your social events or your family events you got to deal with. So. Because you plan your day or you commit time to certain things, you can use that time more efficiently, right? Like I can't, I can't say, oh, I'm dreading doing this, this paper for school. Like I'm going to say, I have this day and this time to do my work and do my reading or do my paper. I have to go do it then. There's no other choice. I can't procrastinate. And that's maybe something that a lot of us do when we're younger or maybe when we're older. But when I was younger, I used to procrastinate. I used to do everything last minute. And now I do the reverse. Now I want to get started like ASAP. So I ha so see how much time I need. I might need less time in and use that time going forward for something else. So, you know, those are good strategies and different ways to like put your time to good use. You know, good habits, good routines, lots of practice. And uh, eventually you'll see progress over time. It's like, it's like losing weight. Like you're not going to see progress. You're not going to see immediate results uh, instantly, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to take time. It's like when I was doing that intermediate fasting. I didn't, I didn't do it to lose weight. I did it because I needed to change my my uh, eating habits and stuff. There's that. I want to give a shout out to this podcast because it's a bunch of guys on Twitter. The podcast is called The Last 30 Years Podcast at TL30 Years, 30, the number 30. And that's at Twitter. They're on Spotify. And their podcast is actually very interesting, and I'll tell you why. I've listened. To, I've been listening to some of the episodes. It's basically a comedic podcast about pop culture, nostalgic, uh, and just like general stories and and things about living in our world. And they talk about like the eighties movies and nineties pop culture and just things like that. And it's with uh, Vin and Wade. You know, their episodes go, you know, about an hour or so. They changed their logo recently. 
actually really like it. It's like a cassette tape. And it's pretty entertaining. They're about on, they're on episode 83. So I definitely check them out. They've been doing their podcast now for two years. And I've been doing it for two months. Maybe a little bit more now, but so two months to two years. So I'm a newbie in this. But these guys have 83 episodes. And I haven't listened to all their episodes, but I've I've listened to some of the recent ones, some of the early ones, some of the middle. So then I have to go back and catch up. So like I said, I catch up when I'm in the shower and stuff like that with my podcast. So I got to listen to that. So shout out to you guys. Everybody check them out on Spotify. And again, they're TL30, the last 30 years on Spotify. Also Anchor, which is owned by the same company. By Vin and Wade. Let's do a let's do a wrong answers only tweet. If you died today and went to heaven, what would it be like? Wrong answers only. William writes Free Poutine Day, a patate gros loop, and Saint Jean de Manatha. <clears throat> then he goes, dang it, now he's hungry. Marie says it'd be peaceful, but I I think that's the right answer, Marie. Uh, Krista writes, welcome to PD. Let's go around the circle and say two fun facts about yourself. Oh my God, Krista. PD is professional development for teachers and educators and administrators. And it's, you know, what most PDs I've been to, professional developments, they're not fun. They're terrible. Always terrible and boring. It's always the same stuff. The best is when they hire people over the years to do the same professional development. And you, you have had them for 10 years. It's literally the same PowerPoint. It's never changed, but they're getting paid to do it. PD hell, man. That's, that's, oh well, yeah. Pierce writes, hell. Tig Welder, he puts a picture of a, like a retro diner. Imagine. Your heaven's like a retro diner. Steve Turner puts the Vegas strip. You Can Too has a picture of an elderly man on one of those, uh, kind of like those seats you put in the staircases that, that bring them down. They're like a mobility, uh, chair to help you get up and down the stairs. And the man's getting to the bottom, and then there's a bunch of lava and fire. So, that's a bad L. Laura puts a long, white, featureless hallways, and inundated with terrifying black goo. And she puts pictures, and it is terrifying. I wouldn't want to be there. Ken Casey writes his last job. Someday a man puts a picture of a gif uh, of a bunny dancing, or a person dressed as a bunny. Uh, Vinny writes, lying down in bed with beautiful... Oh, oh. That's supposed to be a wrong answer, Vinny. He says, spending each waking moment with Ginger, his Ginger idiot friend, Scotia shirtless. It would be bliss. Yeah, he's a funny guy, these guys. Rob the Free Agent writes, it would be at uh, listening to the TL30 Years podcast on a loop, but only Manager Mike uh, segments. <laughs> and that was the wrong answers only to people. Super serious question? Super serious question. What goes best with grilled cheese sandwiches? And again, tomato soup is like the number one answer. A couple dill pickles, french fries. Other people like paired HB sauces. And, and then other, actually one of the other popular answers is a second grilled cheese sandwich. So Stephen T. Stephen T wrote that. Stephen T is from Minnesota. Lots of great answers. So some of the answers on the questions on Twitter have been fantastic. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. This has been the Mr. Mike Podcast. Wrong answers only with... Mr. Mike and no Mr. D. He's not here today. He's pretending to study for his job. He's doing some kind of test. So if I'd ask him to end the podcast, he'd stumble a little bit. We'd laugh. You can Google us. You can find us on any podcasting platform. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Google, Apple, Stitcher, everywhere. Check us out. Subscribe, follow, and most importantly, download the episodes and just for everybody to know when you're listening on a computer uh, off a web browser like google chrome or edge or anything like that when you listen to an episode it automatically downloads but when you listen to it on your phone you have to click the plus button or the download button and that counts as actual downloads because downloads are more important for podcasters so if anybody wants to help out a little bit more when you go listen don't just listen download and add it to your playlist and stuff because those that's taking into uh, consideration for uh, long-term success and numbers so just putting that out there thank you everybody for tuning in and i'll see you next time